Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Romans, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16. The title message is Brotherly Love, Brotherly Love, Brotherly Love. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16, Brotherly Love. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but cond condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this Sunday that we get to come here to a local Bible-believing yeah. church. We ask, Lord, that you please anoint Phil Pastor Jay with the Holy Amen. Spirit. Help him to preach unto us what we need to hear, Lord God. Help us to change and conform to the image of Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Help us to be holy unto you, Lord. We ask that this message puts the fear in our heart to fear you, Lord God. And help us to stay focused today, Lord. Help us to clear our mind and our heart from any of the matters or the affairs that we might have in our life that may distract us, Lord. Help us to cast all of our burdens onto you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross and Amen. shedding all Amen. of your precious blood. Every drop of it, Lord, for you did that to save us from hell, Lord God. And we thank you for saving our souls from hell. Thank you that is salvation by faith and not that of works. Yes. We thank you for the free gift of salvation. Lord, we ask that you please be with us today. We plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ to be upon the congregation and the church grounds, Lord. Please keep the devil's attacks away, the spiritual and the physical attacks. And we pray of this in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 After when we have, you know, a big event, whether it's summer camp, whether it's Jubilee, the following few weeks become very difficult when it comes to spiritual warfare. You receive great blessings and great messages, you know. However, what happens is that you tend to stick to those teachings and, you know, preachings, and suddenly you tend to become haughty-minded. You become proud. Now you've grown, and then you say you have revival within yourself, and you think that, okay, now I'm a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, if you think like that, you know, it's all about being self-esteem and, you know, selfishness, which God doesn't want you to have. Why does that happen? And what's the result of it? And what could become of it? What happens is that when you have that kind of thought, you start to already lose the little that you had, which is brotherly love. Instead of looking at brothers and sisters in Christ with compassion, you suddenly look at them only to see their faults, only to see you know, what they're going to do wrong on their next move. You, know, you and I shouldn't be a Christian who always look at another person's fault. You know, that's what media do. That's what news is all about. You know, Hollywood love is all this carnal lust love like you and I know. But they love evil. You know? Let's go to verse 9. First point is that as a brotherly love, you have to love without dissimulation. What does that mean? Dissimulation has two meanings. One is partiality and hypocrisy. So you can't love partially, and you can't love hypocritically, right? Your love has to be real, and your love has to be impartial 
What does that mean? You have to love each brethren, each brothers and sisters in Christ equally. How about that, man? That's the hardest thing to do, right? Yeah. No, I have to love you equally. I have to love you equally. Man, I can't do it. <laughs> My flesh cannot do it. Yeah. My brain cannot do it. You could only do it through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Why? Because at the end of the day, you have to look at yourself. What kind of love did God give you, right? Yeah. John 3, 16, famous verse, right? Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you, Lord. I mean, you yeah. trusted Jesus Christ. That's all the love that God needed to show to you yes. and me. Amen. And as a undeserving, wretched sinner, yes, I am. how can you not love other brothers and sisters in Christ when you guys were in the same shoes? Oh, as they say, you know, same boat, right? <laughs> Think about it. Can you imagine if you're in those concentration camps back in the day during the World Wars and currently in many parts of the world, do you think you know, it'll fly? Do you think, you know, prisoners will have any kind of, you know, encouragement or hope when they are looking down at each other, when there's an infighting within the concentration camp? Many times when people are put in that situation, they become united because it's so hard, right? You have no food. You have to labor all the time, and you don't know when you're going to die or be killed, but as Christians, you and I become so complacent in our ways, especially in this country, America, you start becoming so selfish in your ways. So when you show your brotherly love, it's partial love or it's hypocritical. You do it because you want to receive something back. Dude, are you the type of Christian? You have to show love, but when you show love, or in action and deed and in words, you have to receive it back. Well, that's the American society. You give and you better get back. You know, it's like you know, I gave you uh, ten bucks. You know, you better give me at least ten bucks back. Fifty. And uh, mostly, you have to give me with interest, right? <laughs> you know, right. that's that's mentality, right? That's how credit card and then all those companies become big, right? Yes. All those interest after interest and interest. Christians shouldn't be an interest Christian, Amen. All right? You shouldn't be a good brother and sister to Christ to other brethren, so that you could receive more blessings from them. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, even in our text today. Okay, look at verse 13. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. You know, if you're ever going to give to brethren when it comes to monetary-wise, don't expect it to get it back. Right. You know, don't have that mentality, right? Don't even give if you don't even have that kind of mindset, yes. right? You know, as church, right, we help, you know, some people in need, right? But... We're not going to tell them, okay, now we're going to give you a payment plan for, you know, 24 months, right? Or 12 months, like with a zero interest. No, that's not how it works as a brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're going to give, you give willingly, freely, cheerfully, not only to the Lord. If you're going to help somebody, help brothers and sisters in Christ, expect nothing back, right? I mean, if their heart is like, oh, I have to give back and they give it back to you, okay, so be it. But you shouldn't be like, okay, man, that's why money shouldn't be involved inside a church, yes. right? It should never because it will split the church. It will split the relationship forever, and you guys will be bitter towards each other, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, it, just, it should be just between you and God when it comes to finances. But if that were to ever happen or if it that happened in your life, just forget about it, right? right. If you were the you know, person giving, forget it, you know, as the Bible says, right? You should have given it with a cheerful heart to another brother. Yes. But if you have that heart where you are partial, then what's going to happen? You're going to be bitter. And many of the you know, pastors and preachers will tell you, you know, bitterness you know, kills the church. Yeah. A lot of times. Like people won't talk to each other for 20 years yeah. because of one incident. And if we see it from the outside view as a third person, you're like, that's so minute, right? Such a petty thing. But for them, they can't really love each other. Because why? In the first place, they don't love the Lord God like they should. Yeah. I mean, what is, before we start loving each other, right? Number one thing, we have a priorities in love. 
Let's turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. You know, a lot of religions have it backwards, like Catholics, you know, like, okay, love thy neighbor, right? Love everyone else except Lord God and his word. Wow. You know, we're different. You know, many of the religions go, okay, love the tulips, right? <laughs> love all those false doctrines first yeah. before you, you know, love God. Yeah. But that's not what God wants. Matthew 22, Matthew 22. So this is a good opportunity for you and I to truly check our hearts, right? Is our priority in love right right now with God? Or are we ahead of God in any way? Matthew 22. I mean, these are, you know, familiar verses. Verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That's the first thing. The first and greatest commandment is to love God first. Amen. If you don't love God, all this love towards brothers and sisters in Christ is not going to work. It's like a driving without an engine, right? Something that runs it. How far are you going to go? You know, we have a car enthusiast here, right? Without the engine, right? Yeah. Or broken engine. How far are you going to go? You're going to go like zero, That's right. right? You're not going to move anywhere. You have to first love God. In loving God, then what's going to happen? You're going to love his word, and you will love serving him. That's what happens. People say, I don't know. I want to serve him more, but why come I can't serve him more? Because you don't love him. Right. I mean, if you love him, serving comes naturally. If you love him, you're going to love his word. Right. I mean, how can you love brothers and sisters in Christ without loving God first? Right. Yeah. It's a backward system we live in, it right? Is. I mean, everybody is guilty, you know, before, before the trial. Many times, right? There's no due process anymore, right? You know, and the media depicts anybody they don't like, right? And then they, you know, antagonize that person without the truth, right? Because they don't, they don't have a foundation. You and I need to have that foundation no matter what. We have to love God first. Amen. God comes before your wife, husbands. Right. God comes before your, yes. you know, husbands, wives. God comes before your children, parents. Yes. God be comes before your jobs, right? Amen. You know, your leisure, anything. God comes before. Right. Then if you love God, then you're going to love his word and you're going to serve him. Amen. Then what does it? Loving God, then priority sets very easily. Word, you're going to love his word, yes. and you're going to be serving him. And then uh, let's go back to our text today, Romans chapter 12. Then you understand what Apostle Paul is talking about. So again, number one, in brotherly love, you have to love without dissimulation. Look at verse 11, and let's start with verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. But before that, look at verse 9. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. There's negative and a positive, right? If you want your brotherly love to really continue, point number two, you have to hate evil. Amen. You have to hate sin. Yeah. How can you love each other if you love sin? And that's where it becomes really hard, right? Yeah. You say, okay, I'm going to do number one. I'm going to love my brothers and sisters in Christ with pure heart. I'm going to love them impartially. I'm going to love everybody equally, right? I'm not going to be that hypocrite. I'm going to give love, and I don't expect to get it back, okay? But now, second thing is, you have to hate evil in order to do that, right? Right? How can you be a good testimony, you know, when you allow, or when you let, when you just cover your brothers and sisters' sin, right? Yeah. Or outside of the world, you know. Real, true brothers and sisters in Christ, we love, they'll talk to each other about certain sins, right? If their brother and sister in Christ, who, who's like hurting you or who's hurting other people, and it's, you know it for sure, and it's against the word of God, right? Staying still 
And shutting your mouth is not going to resolve the issue. No. You know what happens? It's like those leaven, it's just going to grow and grow and grow. Yes. You know, a lot of times, church could be split. But somehow, God sheds light to certain situations through certain people. Right? Because God loves the local church. Amen. God wants to protect the church. Yes. Right? That's why you cannot shut your mouth when it comes to truth. You have to hate evil. Amen. Evil things you hear, you have to let your brothers and sisters in Christ know. Yes. I mean, if it's against the word of God, if it's a sin, let them know. How hard is it? I know it's hard, but are you going to obey God or are you going to obey your feelings? You know, oh, you know, that's going to ruin our relationship. And I love that brothers in Christ. I love that sister in Christ, you know. It took me a long time to build a relationship, you know. And that's not a true relationship if the other person can take, you know, any type of right criticism, right preaching Amen. from the Word of God. Yes. And that's how is that so different from worldly relationship? Yeah. yeah. Do you ever see, you know, in a worldly relationship, you know, you have friends out there, you have, you know, co-workers out there, right? Man, it's not, you don't just go out of the way and point out all their wrongs, right? Unless you're like a boss or something where you're not going to lose your job. But many times, you know, you're going to try to, you know, maintain a real good relationship yes. for your future or your, for your, you know, you know, normal work setting. But when it comes to body of Christ... If you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, which we are same body, yes. you can't let one part of your body just, you know, go bad and suffer. Right. Right? If your toe has frostbite, are you going to just leave it alone? Right? If your finger's broken, are you going to just leave it alone? No. You're not. You have to fix it. Yes. And when you fix things, it hurts. Especially your body, yeah. you try to fix it. It hurts. Yes. If it doesn't hurt, I mean, you have too much drug in you, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. But normal human being, after you break something, after you get hurt, and then doctors try to fix you, it hurts, right? Yes. I mean, after the surgery, after anesthesia, well, I mean, anesthesia state, you know, you know, yeah, I mean, you know the word, right? Yeah. You know, tongue twister, right? Yes. And then time passes by. And then you come to yourself and then say you had a knee surgery, you had an abdominal surgery, you had a back surgery. Man, those pains starts coming in. Yeah. Neck, right? But you have to go through it. Yeah. And after you go through it, it becomes better, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So as a brothers and sisters in Christ, you have to hate evil. And you have to let the others know that you hate evil, right? Amen. Do you know why? You know, there's gossip in the church. Do you know why people slander each other? Do you know why people talk behind, you know, pastor back, pastor's wife back, brother and sister's back? Why? Because they don't hate evil, right? Yeah. If they hate evil, they know that's not the right thing to do. They'll stop themselves from doing it. Yes. But because they don't abhor, think about it. You know, when Lord says abhor, Man, that is such a strong whore. I'm a strong word, right? Yes. You know, if I say I abhor you, man, that, that is a lot of meaning to it. Yeah. I mean, it's like stronger than hate, right? When you listen to it, you know, I abhor you, John. I abhor you, Jennifer. They're like, wow, man, this person really hates me, right? <laughs> you know, it's like more than like I dislike you, you know, I don't like you. This Bible says abhor that which is evil. Yes. So you have to really look at your heart, especially, you know, you got right with the Lord, you know, last weekend. Now you have to continue to check, right? Amen. Am I going to ever compromise my ways, right? If it's right, you know, Bob Jones Sr. said, you know, do right. Two words, do right. Amen. You know how brotherly love is going to continue to grow within the church and in you? You just do right, right? I mean, so, ever evil, opposite of ever evil, what do you think it is? I mean, the Bible says it, cleave to that which is good. Amen. You know, put it in two words. Do right. Yeah. Right? That's point number three. In brotherly love, you know, you have to do right. No matter what. Just do right. 
Do right to your wife, do right to your husband, do right to your children, do right to your grandma, grandpa, do right to your cousins, do right to unsaved people, do, just do right. And what does it mean to do right? Just do what the Bible says. Simple as that. You're like, oh, it's so hard. I don't know the answer. Go to the book. Book has all the answer. I mean, it's just an excuse when you say, I don't know the answer. I mean, 2 Timothy 2.15, we always talk about it. Study to show thyself, approve unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a command. You know, all these things, you know, it's like a puzzle. It, if you start putting it in the right places, it creates a real good picture. The reason... You don't really have love for brethren, and you don't even know what true brotherly love is. Your puzzle in life is just out of place. So literally, when you're looking at the mirror, you should see your whole self. But because you can't put yourself together in the right places, it's all over the place. Yeah. Like you can't find your eyes, right? Yeah. I mean, even if you have eyes, you, you can't find your mouth. I mean, where's your heart? You can't even find it. Yeah. Why? Because you're so selfish. Because all you think about is self-esteem. You know, this world wants you to be selfish, and this world wants you to just grow your self-esteem, yes. right? Yeah. That's not what God wants. God wants you to be dependent upon Him. Amen. You know, independence from God will lead you to destruction. Yes. And that's why we're always in that destructive state. Yes. At any moment, if you're away from the Lord's dependency, that's why, you know, I can do all things through Christ. It doesn't say I can do all things through me. It doesn't say I can do all things through, like, workout people. Steroids, right? You can. You know, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So you have to find strength in the Lord always. So when was the last time you just stood for right things, right? Just do right, right? And God always gives you opportunity. Do you know why? Because God tests your love to him. God tests his love to me, right? He wants to see, do you, do you really love me? You know, you know God, God has to know. I mean, God tested Abraham. Yes. I mean, he offered up Isaac, right? I mean, you think you're better than Abraham? No. I know you want to be, just like all the prosperity gospels out there, you know. You know, you, you become like Abraham, you become rich and stuff. No. I mean, when was the last time you sacrificed for your brethren, right? Look at Abraham. You know, he preferred Lot. What does that mean? He let Lot have first choice, yeah. right? When was the last time you let your brethren have first choice? Never? Okay, there's a good food here. Okay, if, you're not a, if you don't love food, forget it, right? Uh, don't even answer. Oh, you know, I'll let them have it because you don't love it, right? But if you love food and then your, I guess, best cut of meat from cow is your ribeye, right? And it's like the best ribeye ever. It melts in your mouth, you know? You don't even have to use your tongue. I mean, you don't have to use your teeth either, right? <laughs> you, hopefully you have your tongue, right? You know? And then you put it in your mouth and it just melts, right? And then you have that experience. And there's like a three pieces left, right? Yes. Okay, first one goes to the eldest, you know, second one goes to the second eldest, you know, and the rest of them, you know, I'm older than them, you know, so I deserve it. Or, you know, there's a, someone, you know, they haven't eaten for the longest time, you know. <laughs> you know they have never eaten it, and you know they deserve it more than you. But it's not you, though. When... You have the first priority. You never give it to other brethren. I mean, that's you, though. That's, that's, that's a Christian, just their, you know, main picture of Christian. They never want to give up anything for another brethren. I mean, and then you say, I want to be like Abraham. You know, I want to be like Jesus Christ. Forget it. Don't even utter those words. It's yeah. a shame. You're bad testimony. And especially to this unsaved world, they look at you because you might be the only Jesus Christ or the Bible they ever see. They see how selfish you are. Like, forget it. I don't want that religion. I don't want to get saved, right? I see Mother Teresa's of the world. 
mean, who thought it was safe, you know? I see these Gandhis of the world, and I see all these, you know, you know, this like a charitable people, you know, their heart, we don't know their heart, okay? But outside actions, they are giving, right? They're philanthropic, right? Yes. But you, you're like, oh. I mean, food is easy example, that's why I'm using it. <laughs> There's like a one cookie left. And then you look around, man, and then you just run to it. You grab it, and you enjoy it. You're like, oh, man, that's the best cookie I ever tasted. I mean, unbeknownst to you, everybody's watching you. I'm like, man, you're like grown up adult, and there's a starving kid, and you just ignore them, and then you just eat it. I mean, how can they really truly, you know, accept 1 Peter 5, right? You know, when he's talking about obey elders, right? I mean, there's the preachers, and then there's just the elderly people. And you don't even have a good testimony, and then you expect him to just, you know, respect you, you know, obey you and stuff? No. It's two-way street. And obviously, kids should right away show respect, you know, to the elders right away. That's what you ought to do. And you shouldn't be testing elders. Okay, let me see if they're good or not. No, you just obey. But however, elders have to show some, you know, good good, you know, testimony to young people, then what's the best way to do it? Do right, right? Cleave unto that which is good, right? It might make your wife cry. Cleave unto what's good. It might make your husband angry. Cleave unto which is good. Yeah. Your children might hate you. Cleave to that which is good. You just got to do right. Amen. Man, God's going to resolve the rest of the things. Don't you think God, creator of the universe, who lives inside of you, can resolve this tiny stuff that's going on in your life yeah. if you don't trust, when you trust Him, yeah. right? But it's all the way around. When you get pressure by your surroundings, when you get pressure by your family members, when you get pressure by other brethren, and you refuse to do right, then it's going to come back and haunt you. Man. Galatians chapter 6, you read what you saw. And then when brotherly love is not present, then you have worldly love, fleshly love, you know, devilish love. Simple as that. What's the opposite of godly love? Yeah. World, the devil, and the flesh. So, Essentially, what kind of love do you think you're giving to each other if you're not showing godly love to each other yeah. as brothers and sisters in Christ? You're giving worldly love to each other. And that's the worst thing. That really, really pollutes the body of Christ. Yes. And don't think that another person is less important than the other. Right? We just have different roles. I always tell you know, everyone, you know, we just have different roles. But every part of the body of Christ is as important Amen. as every other part. Right. Yeah, I mean, imagine if I don't have, like, fingernails. I could, give, I could get infected very easily, right? right? I mean, they, every part of the body have very critical roles. And then if you don't treat each body of Christ impartially and just doing right, telling them what's the right thing to do, then you're going to pollute them. For example, if someone comes up to you, I don't know, you're, you're older, right? Or you've been saved longer. And then, I mean, it's a perfectly fine example because you have more experience to the younger Christian. And then they ask you something, right? They ask your advice. They ask you, you know, some kind of counsel. And they expect you to say, Godly things. You know, don't think that they don't know it. Sometimes they come and they just need that confirmation. Okay, man, I know. Like my pastor, okay. You know, I know this teacher. I know this brother and sister. You know, they did not prove me wrong. You know, so I know I have to do right. But suddenly they say, okay, is it good to just go watch a movie? You know, it's like a real good movie, you know. You know, it's like a, it's talking about certain godly stuff and stuff, right? You know, 
And then, you know, you're not supposed to go to theaters, right? You know, for yeah. what it stands for. And you're like, ah, you know what? It's okay. You know, you're, you're getting something good out of it, right? <laughs> Again, Bob Jones Sr. said, it is never right to do wrong in order to do right. Yeah. Amen. Right? You're like, yes. oh, you know, there's a Christian concert out there. You know, there's a lovely singer, you know? And then they're sharing some lovely messages out there. You know, God is love, you know. Jesus is love, you know. But they're full of what? They're full of, you know, rock music. Yes. They're full of worldly music, yes. right? And then they're you know, like, hmm, if I tell them that's devil's music, if I tell them you shouldn't go there, they'll never talk to me again. That's like the only friend I have at the church, you know. <laughs> like, they're like, yeah, yeah, I think it's okay because message is good, you know. Wrong thing to do. Yeah. They're like, okay, I'll never talk to this person. The inside they know, this guy is a compromiser. And every time they talk to you, they'll never take you seriously. I mean, some of you guys, you have to understand, people don't take you seriously. Yeah. Why? Because you're not real. Why? Because you don't do right. What do you expect? Christianity is not a popularity contest. It's not like you're running for school president. No. This is about standing for truth. And if you can't stand for truth, how are you going to love brethren? How do you want them to love you? It's like asking someone, you have a, your hand is so dirty, right? Your hand has, you know, dirt everywhere. Your hand has been washed for a long time. And then the other brother could see it. And I'm going to Brother Richard. Hey, how are you? So he's going to run away from me. Okay, let's just do a bump or something, you know. I don't want to be contaminated, anyway. right? But a lot of Christians, without you knowing, you're that contaminant. Yes. You're that pollutant to not just the brothers and sisters in Christ, but to the world. I mean, what's the whole purpose? You and I are here right now so that you and I can lead others to Christ, yeah. right? Before the Lord comes back, you want to lead as many people to the Lord by growing in the Word of God, by loving the Lord, right? Yes. By loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. And then it goes out to the unsaved people in the world. How are you ever going to accomplish that? How are you ever going to do that without doing right all the time? Yeah. You know, there's going to be trials and there's going to be, what, tears along the way. I mean, who said Christian life will be a piece of cake? As pastor, right? I mean, is it a piece of cake? I mean, no. It's not the easiest thing. However, we actually have a solution, though. If you trust that Christ, someone can lead you. Someone can help you solve everything. World people don't have that. World people are they're trying to you know, pull their hairs out. They're trying to you know, work their small, tiny brains over time, trying to resolve things. But they can't. But you and I have the perfect solution. That's Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Why can't you stand for right? If you don't stand for right, if you don't do right, you don't love your family. You don't love God. Don't say you love him if you don't stand for right. I mean, think about it. Can you imagine? I say I love my wife and I want to treat my wife really well. So I go to Las Vegas, you know, play some card games, do some slots, right? And I somehow make money by blessings of the devil, right? You know? And come back and buy it like, oh, yeah, honey, this is like the you know, ladies and the greatest and stuff. And she's happy, right? She doesn't know where he came from, right? But what do you think is going to happen when she finds out where he came from? If that person is a any way godly person, they'll probably throw it away. But, I mean, human nature is that they might not be, but they're going to hate you for it. Yeah. Why? You made me compromise, right? Yeah. It's like Israelites, God says, stay away from the heathens. Yes. Yeah. They intermarry, bring the idols yeah. and fornication to them, destroy the whole nation. Yeah. That's what happens. You know, Bible says, be holy for I am holy. God did not say it just to, you know, make himself look holy. No. He wants to protect you and I. Amen. 
In love, you know, true love is protection, right? Yeah. You love your children by protecting them from this wicked ideologies everywhere, yes. right? Especially California. Amen. Gender ideology, you know, economic ideology, you know, political ideology, everything. Yes. All this junk is, you know, going to your children. Yeah. If you truly love them, what are you going to do? You got to protect them. Amen. You got to wash them. Yes. You got to show them what's right. And you got to do what's right. But if you haven't been doing it, you really have to get right with the Lord. Yeah. Man, Lord's coming back very soon. Yeah. We believe it, right? Yes. You want to be found a faithful servant Amen. or you want to be a compromiser? <laughs> because whether you like it or not, you're going to be exposed. Yes. You know, all these thieves, all these criminals think that I could hide. You know, I could hide behind it. You know, I, even like false preachers, right? You know, I could hide behind this, you know, pulpit. <laughs> but some people are going to see me. I mean, that section could see me. Maybe that section, maybe middle can see me. Yeah. But God sees everything. Amen. Why are you trying to hide from God? Yeah. If you don't want to love that brother or sisters in Christ, just pray. You know, Romans chapter 5 has the answer. You know, let the Holy Spirit love them through you. Simple as that. Right? They have the same Holy Spirit. Right? They have the same Savior. You guys are same body in Christ. Ask the Holy Ghost to love them through you. You know, it's not the most impossible task in the world. Right. Yeah. You know, it's the funny, here's a funny story. I don't know about here in America, in a lot of other parts of the world, especially like Asia, like Korea, where you come from, where you were born, plays a huge part in a community or, you know, in like a life in general, social life. Like you go to a job interview, and then the interviewer is super harsh, right? Like, man, do you speak this language? You know, do you have this experience? Do you have all of that or whatnot? And then, man, you know, man, this is tough. I don't know if I'm going to get the job. And then suddenly, he sees the resume. Oh, you're from Busan, huh? Which part of Busan are you from? And like, oh, this part of the Busan. I graduated from, what? You know, I graduated like, you know, 20 years before you. Oh, do you know this person, that person? They're like, yeah, that's my dad, you know? Okay, and he doesn't care, the interview, okay, you got the job, you know? Yeah. It happens a lot, you know, like nepotism, you know, they say. You might really, really hate each other. We come from different backgrounds. You know, we yes. are here because hopefully you love the truth. Amen. Amen. And that alone should give you that key that key to unlock that brothers and sisters relationship, right? Yes. You know, they love the truth. They're safe. We're the same part of the body. Yes. Why, why would I hate that person, right? If you really love that person, just show them the right things to do, right? If that person is constantly committing sin, you know, why don't you, as a true brothers and sisters in Christ, talk to them instead of gossiping or, you know, slandering, right? For example, every, a lot of people have siblings here, right? Yes. If your brother or sister is out there doing drugs all the time, are you going to just leave him alone? If you truly love him, you've got to talk to him. Hey, you know, hey brother, hey sister, you know, you got to stop doing that drug. It's bad for you, yes. right? You've got to talk to them constantly. And especially if you guys are close brothers and sisters in Christ, I mean, brothers and sisters in just, you know, regular world, you're going to talk to each other all the time. Yeah. And your heart's going to break every time they relapse and do drugs again. You have that kind of love for your love, you know, regular siblings, right? Unsaved people. But we're all for brethren, right? I mean, your brethren, is, you're going to see them for all eternity. And especially, sometimes it's going to be stronger bond than your family because some of your family members aren't saved. Right. To those brothers and sisters in Christ, if someone's struggling, if someone's not doing well, are you going to just leave them alone? You don't do that to your own family. Why do you do that to your own body of Christ? Yeah. See, you know why? It's simple. Because you're very selfish. You, know? you esteem yourself better than other people. 
You know, in the beginning, I talked about priorities in love. You know, first and greatest is to love the Lord God himself. And secondly, it's to you got to love your neighbor, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And then lastly, it's you. You always have to be last. That's why, you know, as I was preparing, that question really, you know, hit me hard. I mean, if there's a preferable choice, do I think about my brethren first or do I think about me first, right? If there's a choice, I mean, have I ever been like Abraham, you know? I let, you know, Lot take it first. I mean, you should give your choice first to your brethren. That shows that you love them. But if you don't, and if you're not going to change, you'll never love your brethren. Yeah. You'll just be a selfish Christian. It's, it's easy. How to be a bad Christian? How to be a bad brothers and sisters in Christ? Just be selfish, right? If you see something good, just grab it. Don't offer it to your brothers and sisters in Christ, right? You should be the first in line and first to go out. That's you, right? You know, they say all the workers are last in line and last to leave, right? 10% of the church does the 90% of the work, which is true. Not only here, even in a lot of the organizations out there, you know, whether it's corporate, you know, whether it's any type of, you know, organizational structure in place, usually, you know, over there, like 20, 80 rule, right? 20% does like the 80% of the job, right? So over here, but church is a little bit, you know, tighter when it comes to ratio. You know, 10% does 90%. Why is that? Because majority of the Christians are all selfish, right? Yes. You and I included. So yes. Don't deny it, right? Amen. If you don't have to do it, you'll be the first one to just avoid it. Yeah. Simple as that. Oh, man, do I have to unfold those chairs? I mean, those chairs, only an engineer could unfold it, right? You know, do it. Learn how to do it. Yeah. Oh, man, toilet stinks, you know. I don't want to go in there and wash it. I mean, wash things, you know. But it's part of the ministry. Yes. Oh, man, there's too much dust. Who's going to clean it up? <laughs> oh, man, there's a mess on the table. Where is this kid, you know? Where's this sister? You know, where's this young boy? Why can't you ever do it if you have the opportunity to do it, yes. right? I mean, there's always a, you know, we, we have jobs to do at the church, right? And we call it chores here. But you don't have to be sitting there 20 minutes expecting someone to clean up your own spill. Right. Isn't that the funniest thing? You spill the, I don't know, coffee, I mean, I've been guilty of it. You spill it and you expect someone else to clean it up. And then you start criticizing the teachers for not doing their job, teaching their students to respect elders by cleaning up their messes, you know. It's on you. Yes. I'm using a lot of Bob Jones Sr. today. Bob Jones Sr. said, the problem is with you. Yes. You, 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 you. Right. Yeah. Amen. And then you, me, too, right? Yeah. The problem is with you, right? Yes. And if you ever think that problems with other people always, you'll never love that brethren or sister or brothers in Christ. How can you? You, know, you can't even see your own faults. Right. You know, the funniest thing is that when people, <laughs> you know, they have dirt on their face and they're telling people, hey, what's your face? Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, when... There, you know, shirt is not tucked in. They tell kids, hey, tuck your shirt in, you know. Hey, you're not even a good testimony. You're not even a good example. You know, in order to really love your brethren, each person, each one of us have to take our cross, right? Yes. And then just do it. What does that mean? It's self-denial. You have to deny yourself, right? You know, you, if you really want to love each other, you just have to deny yourself. You know, take up your cross. They're like, what does it mean to take up my cross? Deny. Deny, 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 deny. What your flesh wants to do, just say, no, 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 no. Only what Holy Spirit and what the Bible says, no, I'm just going to do. What the Lord tells me to do, I'm going to do. Yes. Right? Then all these things that look so hard, right? You know, wife, submit yourself to husband, right? Husband, you know, love your wife like 
as yourself. You know, children obey your parents. Those things doesn't become as hard as before, right? right? Why? Because I love the Lord first. Amen. I love His Word. And then, Amen. just looking at what the Bible says, I hate evil. I want to just do right. <laughs> Those are the best Christian, their most, I guess, you know, greatest blessing to a ministry, yeah, right? Absolutely. They just do right. You know, they don't care what other people think. And they love their brethren. So they're not doing right just to put people down. They do it because with tender heart, right? Ephesians 4.32, with tender heartness, right? With compassion, they do it. Last point, don't ever show your brotherly love with contempt, right? Don't do it because you want to show him up, right? Don't do it because I want them to know, you know, in that kind of attitude, right? You have to do it with compassion. Yes. Yeah. Nobody's a fool. Even little children know when people do it out of love or out of hate or contempt, right? You know, true leaders who's loved by, you know, their followers, even though they're hard, even though they're strict, even though you know, their policies might be you know, so strict, but they know that they do it out of love. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like I say, it's for each other's protection. Right? Yes. Why, why am I keep on telling you, like, you know, all these things related to the Bible and our church policies and rules in place to protect us? To protect you, right? If you're going to be out there, you know, spreading that, oh, King James Bible is not the perfect word of God, then don't come. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you here anyways if you don't believe King James Bible is perfect word of God, right? Yes. And if you're going, oh, you know, I don't agree what that pastor does, don't come. Exactly. Go somewhere else. There, there are plenty of churches out there. Just go across over here. There's like three over here, right? <laughs> Just go over there. You know, as long as, you know, our church and ministry and the leaders of the church follow the perfect word of God, yes. use the, you know, right doctrine, teach right doctrine, Amen. God's going to bless it. Yes. But if we ever go haywire, then God's not going to bless it. Yes. Then if you, wanna, if you don't want to follow the right doctrine, right word of God, right fellowship, find different love out there. Sure. Yeah. I'll show you. There's a millions of channels in YouTube, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. You know, just connect with them. They're waiting for you. Yeah. They're like, come on over. Yeah. Tell us all the dirt about BBCI. You know, we hate them. They're the cults, you know. We hate them so much, you know. They tell us that we, that only Jesus Christ saves, That's you know. It. They're telling us that tribulation have different salvation plan. Yeah. You know, they're telling us that rapture is going to happen, That's you know. Right. There's more than one rapture, you know. Yeah. They're telling us that, you know, it's only premillennialism, right? Yeah. You know, and then they're telling us that, you know, there's New Jerusalem, right? Well, and they're telling us that, you know, there's only 66 books in the Bible, you know, not like <laughs> Apocrypha and everything. Oh, they're telling us that you can never lose your salvation, Amen. you know? And then they're telling us, you know, all this stuff. That's right. You don't agree with it? Just go somewhere else. That's it. Simple. That's it. Because then you're going to pollute the body of Christ. If you're a truly saved person, it's better for you to, you know, how should I say, cut yourself from more loss. Yes. It's like, it's like you're stumping your own foot, you know. Stumping your own foot, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'll finish with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is known as the chapter of charity. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And all the marriages will be a blessing to each other, you know. No worries, no fighting, no quarrel. If you just follow 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's look at verse 4. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Are you doing any of these? I mean, are you following this? Right? You and your wife and your children and the church and the body of Christ will do really well. If we follow this charity, look at verse 6. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. If you really love God, if you say you love truth, 
then you got to love the King James Bible. Yes. It's a perfect word of God. Amen. If you don't love King James Bible, to me, you have no love. Right. Perfect word of God. I mean, if you don't rejoice in the truth, so many people who, who hate King James Bible, you know, you don't really love God. No. There's no charity in you. So amongst our brethren, we have to really constantly check if you have them, right? Yes. I mean, do I love the Bible? Perfect word of God, King James Bible? Check. Right. Do I stand for King James Bible? You, you should be checked. Right, you know, no matter what. Right. Amen. Man, are there any other versions out there? No. Only King James Bible. Amen. Amen. Then if you're listening and if you're in the, on the fence somewhere, if you don't believe in the perfect truth, perfect word of God, inspired word of God, preserved word of God, you'll never have love. That's you'll never true. have true love. And that's sad, yes. right? And it all starts, Why? You want to have brotherly love? Have that priority in straight. Love the Lord God most. Amen. And you love his word and you serve him. Like serving him fervently. Yeah. You know, like we saw it. I mean, people say, well, how do I become like that brother or sister? You know, who's always gung-ho. Who never misses anything. And I could truly see that they love the Lord. Just look at the verse above. You know, Right? They do right. They hate evil. You know, they love brethren. You know, without any compromise, without partiality, without any hypocrisy. It is important for us to constantly check, you know, our relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. If you have right fellowship with the Lord, you're gonna have you have you're gonna have no worries loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you have you know right relationship with the Lord, then sin problems will be resolved. Amen. Yeah. Yes. But if you go backwards, no relationship with the Lord, then you have full of sin problems. How are you ever gonna love your brothers and sisters in Christ when you can't even resolve your own? Right. So solve your own problems first, go to the Lord, and like the word of God says, you know, love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul. You know, passionate. Christians with zeal will do something for the Lord. Self-willed, self-esteem, selfish, complacent Christians will, won't do anything for the Lord. Right. They'll only divide the church in half and be the workers of the devil. Man. Do you love the right way? I mean, that's always the question, right? Yeah. Do you love like the Hollywood? Or do you love like how the Lord wanted you to love? Him, brethren, and the lost people out there. Let's pray. Dear Father, many days go by where we're so full of ourselves, so selfish in our ways, and we tend to neglect brotherly love, Lord. But you've mentioned it in the Word of God several times because it's important. Because we should love our neighbors. We should love our brothers and sisters Christ above us, Lord. Help us to set our priorities right. Yeah. You know, Lord God, you first. And our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, and me last, Lord. If there's been any instances or if all of us been where, you know, we don't prefer to other brethren, help us to get right with you, Lord. And just like... Abraham did, you know, just show some brotherly love, you know. Give others what's the best, and Lord, you will fulfill everything for us. Why are we so selfish, Lord? Help us to get right with you, Lord. I pray that you'll bless us, you'll bless the rest of the services. I pray that true brotherly love will be here in the church, outside of church, in each person's lives. And above all, Lord, come quickly, Lord. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.